Hello everyone, it's Mr. Wassman, and today we start our journey into Unit 4 of our Everyday Math series. Uh, we are in our home links, uh, Unit 4, Lesson 1, Multiplication Puzzles. It says, solve the multiplication puzzles mentally, fill in the blank boxes. You might be thinking to yourself, but Mr. Wassman, these numbers that I'm being asked to multiply are huge. How am I supposed to do this in my head? Well, if you take a look at the uh, first example right here, you're going to notice that uh, the numbers, although large, uh, don't have a lot of uh, character to them in that, that they are filled with zeros. And, of course, you and I know that zeros serve two purposes. One, they represent the concept of nothing. And two, they are place value holders. So let's take a look at two times... 300. Well, if I just ignore for a moment these two zeros right here, what I'm really being asked to do is multiply 2 times 3. And of course, you and I know that 2 times 3 is 6. So when I multiply 2 times 3 hundreds, I'm basically multiplying 2 times 3 with two zeros behind it. So what's my answer? Well, that would be 6 with two zeros behind it. 6 zero, zero. That's all I'm doing here is I'm multiplying the whole number digits two times three and then I am adding zeros behind it, the same number of zeros in my factor of 300. So if I multiply three times 300, well all I'm doing here is I'm multiplying three times three with two zeros behind it. Three times three groups of hundred is 900. Now again, Multiplication is just repeated addition, so I could write that problem out as an addition problem. So if I multiply 3 times 300, I'm basically adding 300 to itself three times. And when I'm adding zeros, all I'm doing is just I'm bringing those zeros down to, again, hold my place value. Putting those zeros to the right of those threes tells us we're dealing with hundreds, okay, not just single digits. Three plus three plus three, of course, is nine. So you can see how I get those answers, okay? So when I approach a problem, say, in the second example, where I'm given the product but not one of the factors, as you're going to see in later problems, Again, I just have to analyze the, the factor and the product and think to myself, what times 4 gives me 32? Well, I know that 8 times 4 is 32. So 8 times 4 gives me 32 can be extended into 80 times 4 by just adding a 0. So 4 times 32 or I'm sorry, 4 times 8 gives me 32. 4 times 8 tens gives me 32 tens. And that's what 320 is. It's just 32 groups of 10. So when you approach these problems, you're going to be tested on your single-digit multiplication knowledge. Okay, That phrase, mentally, that's going to be important. Because at this point in your journey into fourth grade, we're going to start relying on you to know your single-digit multiplication facts by heart, okay? Uh, your math pe teacher probably knows that all of you can figure out how to multiply two numbers together if given enough time. But uh, in these instances, we need you to be able to just call up the answers uh, mentally uh, so that uh, when we get into multi-digit multiplication, which is as you could probably guess, coming down the pike really soon, um, knowing your single-digit multiplication facts will help aid in that process. So let's take a look at this first set of problems for number one. 8 times 7, well, we know that's 56, right? 8 times 7 is 56. So 8 times 7 tens is going to give me 56 tens, otherwise known as... 560. 9 times 7, of course, is 63. So 
So 9 times 7 tens is going to give me 63 tens. Okay. Now I go across to the 400 factor. Now that just has two zeros behind it, so I'm still just multiplying by the 4 and just adding the two zeros behind after the fact. 8 times 4, of course, is 32. We figured that out in the last example. 8 times 4 with two zeros is going to give me 32 with two zeros. 32 hundreds, otherwise known as 3,200. That's what 3,200 is. 3,200. And then finally, 9 times 4, what we know is 36. So 9 times 4 with two zeros is going to give me 36 with two zeros, or 3,600. Again, when we are holding place values with zeros, if we find ourselves with more than three digits, we need to start separating those digits with commas so that uh, we can easily visualize that we're now in the thousands. Let's do one more set of problems. I'm going to skip down to number five right below. Now you have some missing factors here that you have to uh, figure out. Okay, First set of clues is that we have 30 and 270. So here we have 3 with 1 0 and 27 with 1 0. So I ask myself what times 3 gives me 27? Well the answer to that would be 9. 9 times 3 gives me 27. So when I multiply 9 times 3 with a 0, I'm going to get 27 with 1 0. Okay. The number of zeros in the product is related to the number of zeros in each factor. And they can be distributed between either factor. So now I'm going to look at 8 times 30 or 8 times 3 with a 0. Well, I know that 8 times 3 is 24. And 30 is just 3 with a 0 behind it. So 8 times 30 is going to be 24 tens, or 24 with a zero behind it, otherwise known as 240. Now what about this one here? We have 8 as our factor, and we have 56 with two zeros, otherwise known as 5,600. Now 8 has no zeros behind it. It's just a single digit, 8 ones. So my other factor must have the other two zeros in it. So what times 8 gives me 56? Well, that would be 7. So I'm going to write 7 right here. And since there are no zeros behind the 8, the two zeros have to be part of this factor, which makes it 7 with two zeros, otherwise known as 700. Okay, so 8 times 700 is 56 hundreds, otherwise known as 5,600. And now that we have our missing factors here and here, we can now multiply them together. 9 times 700, okay, 9 times 7 is of course 63. So 9 times 7 with two zeros behind it is going to give me 63 with two zeros behind it, otherwise known as 63 hundreds or 6,300. And of course, you can transfer that very same fact right above to problem number 3 because you're given 9 times 7 again, which is, of course, 63. But there are three zeros listed here. And since there are no zeros behind the 9, I'm just going to put three zeros behind the 63. That becomes 63,000 because there are five digits involved in that answer. 
If you have any questions about how to multiply, um, talk to your math teacher. If you uh, can't remember all of your single-digit multiplication facts, I would invite you to either consult your SRB, which will have a uh, multiplication division times table in it, or look at the inside back cover of your uh, math journal, volume one. It's got a t uh, multiplication division table in it. Um, you might want to invest in some flashcards or perhaps a... Uh, uh, a package of index cards which you can make your own flashcards because the sooner you memorize these uh, single digit multiplication facts the easier all of this will become. Some of you are probably looking at this as home links uh, assignment and realizing that oh once you get the whole thing with the zeros uh, you're going to just zip right through it. Okay? Uh, one last thing I'd like to point out and that is this. When you are multiplying um, two numbers together and they both involve zeros in their factors, like this one, 2 times 4. It's not really 2 times 4, it's 2 with 1 zero behind it, times 4 with 2 zeros behind it, 20 times 400. Well, 20 times 400 is going to give you 8,000 because this zero right here is combined with these zeros over here. Okay, two times four is eight, of course. So two with one zero times four with two zeros gives me eight with one, two, three zeros behind it. The one zero comes from the 20, and two of the zeros come from the 400, giving you the product of 8,000, okay? I know you guys can get this. This is easy stuff. Once you know your single-digit multiplication facts, you're golden, okay? So until we talk again, friends, uh, have a good day. Thanks.